Hello, hello, we are live. It's Aaron Roy from Teachable. Uh, thank you for everyone who's joining us today for a, it's a snowy day in New York, but a, another workshop at Discover. Today, we have Tammy McCullough with us. We have an awesome workshop. I just saw a sneak preview of or the working session we're going to get a chance to witness. Um, I see folks already showing up in the chat, which makes me happy. For those who are joining us for the first time, perhaps you've been here before, these next two minutes, all I want to do is let us know where you're joining from. You know, Let us know you could hear us. Let us know you can see us okay. That way, before we kick off this incredible workshop, we have all the technical glitches sorted out well in advance. So I see folks, can you can you see and hear us? I, I haven't really seen anybody typing about that yet, but I do see folks joining from London. We got Baton Rouge. We have uh, Mexico. We have San Luis. We got sunny San Diego. Um, but let us know in the chat you can see and hear us. And Tammy, say hello. I'll kick it to you in just a few, but let's test everything. Hello, hello, hello. Here from sunny Santa Barbara, California. Oh, man. So it's beautiful there, too. It is. Yeah. We, yeah. Have, a, we have another snowstorm in New York. Um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's, what, a, what a year. Um, so like I said, folks, for everyone joining us, we're going to get started in just a few moments. Thank you for uh, Liz Jesse for letting me know you can see and hear us. That's what Hi, I was Liz. Waiting. Nice, nice. That, that's what I was waiting for. We want to make sure you can hear Yay. us before we get into it. We did uh, some promoting for this, so I'm very excited to see some of the students from Mosaic Arts Online here ready to dive in for a fun little hour. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. Um, and for those joining us, if you're joining us late, perhaps you're watching this five minutes from now, um, don't worry if you're joining late. There will be a replay available. Um, you know, if, if Liz, or sorry, if Tammy does something incredible today and you want to stop for a second because you're following along, feel free to pause. That's okay. The, the replay will be there. You, we'll send the link out after as well. Um, also, if you're here today and really excited about the Q&A, that's, that's going to happen. Um, we're going to leave time at the end of this workshop for any questions you may have, and we have Tammy here to answer those questions. So we're strap up, get your workshops ready, get your hands ready, because today is going to be a work-along session. Um, and Tammy, I think, you know, we've given a few minutes. I'm going to kick it to you. The floor is yours. Let's get going. Wow. Thank you, Aaron. It's a privilege to be here. I'm so excited to share a little bit of me with all of you and this platform. Um, Basically, I am a mosaic artist from Santa Barbara, California, and I uh, started mosaic art in 1996, but then quickly it became a um, business. In 2000, I was named my business All Cracked Up Mosaics and started having commissions ordered and um, doing lots of work in whatever place I could. I never had a real um, professional studio until we moved to Santa Barbara. Before that, and in conjunction with it, I was a costumer for movies and television. So I was working 16, 18 hour days, but loving my new hobby and passion of mosaic art. So I would bring my commissions to, um, if they were small enough to my trailer and work in between our lighting setups and stuff like that. But here we are now at um, all the way to 2016 and we launched Mosaic Arts Online. I was teaching to um, lots of students in 2009, started Santa Barbara School of Mosaic Art and felt like we really could reach even more of an audience and invite maybe more instructors to be a part of it. So that's sort of just a really quick background into um, how we got to here today. But I'm really excited today to share um, something that's been a big passion of mine um, with Mosaic Art, and that's my daily meditations and mantras that I use. And um, I meditate every day, and I do it with um, personalized mantras that work for me, and anything can be a mantra, and we'll talk a lot more about that as I'm making. I'm going to kind of um, just kind of go through what mantras are and how they can help you out along the way. So um, now that you know a little bit about me, I think we could dive right in, Aaron, and start to um, make some mantras and do a little mosaic piece. If you are going to make along with me because you have seen this process a little bit, otherwise this is just a great way to sit down and have some eye candy, grab your favorite coffee or whatever, and um, watch me create uh, this piece and hopefully it inspires you to um, want to create uh, the mantra mosaic and then understand a little bit more about these uh, mantras and what they can do for you. Super exciting. Okay, I'm gonna just flip when the camera ready. and we'll be right there. Just a second folks while we get this set up. Uh, we did get a 
it's not up yet, Tammy. We do have a, there we go. Awesome. Looks perfect. Great. So, um, all right. So let's talk about, is it focused? Aaron, are you seeing it focused? It, it's a smidge blurry, but uh, yeah. Okay. Hold on. We're just going to get the focus right. Can you go on? Can you make it big, Aaron? Absolutely. Um, okay, so let's talk about this is the piece that is in the Mantra Mosaic course at Mosaic Arts Online. This is what I made on camera. And um, we, I work on different sections of it. Aaron, is it still blurry? A smidge, but it was, it's a little clearer now. Sorry, hold on. This wasn't. No worries, folks. We had, a, we had a perfect dry run, but you know. We did how. have a perfect rehearsal. <laughs> well, How's it look now, Aaron? Uh, it looks good. Let me make a big screen again. Okay. I'm going to keep moving forward and see if the tech person here can fix this. But anyway, what we have here is the piece that I made um, in the course. And what I want to talk about is. Um, we're going to talk about mantras, but we're also going to talk about um, the um, the art elements that are involved in this. Perfect. And um, so what we have here is we're going to talk about focal points. We're going to talk about balance and we're going to talk about proportion, some texture, color, all things that actually do matter when you are creating a piece like this, because you don't want it to be too chaotic. You want it to still have a cohesiveness to it, even though it is um, very busy, very colorful, and um, it is uh, um, has a meaning to it because of all of the words. So I'm going to move this piece for right now, even though this is our inspiration. And this is sort of like a two-part workshop in the sense that we are going to create some um, polymer clay uh, mantra words. So we're going to use my favorite polymer clay, which is Sculpey. And we're going to use some mica powders, which I just have a couple of them here, but I have way too many to choose from. So two is good to start with right now. We're going to use some rub and buff, which are some really fun pastes that you can make the um, the words come out. So I've pre-made a few of these words so that we can move along. And in the course, you get a little bit more in depth to how to make them um, hard, which is them baked in a uh, either polymer clay oven or a toaster oven. And I'll show you how to make the words that I've chosen pre ahead of time. So let's just get started right away because there is a lot to cover in this course because I would like to complete this whole mosaic with you and talk to you a little bit about my um, how my meditation works for me and my mantras and what they can do for you. So basically, what this is, is it's polymer clay, which is a form of plastic. And what you want to do is you want to warm it up in your hand for a couple minutes. So this is probably the size of a, I don't know, it's way smaller than a, um, than a golf ball. But you're going to warm it up and get to a place that you can roll it out. So we're just going to warm it up a little bit. And then... And then you don't need a lot of tools for this process. You um, can use a PVC pipe instead of a fancy acrylic, you know, polymer clay roller. Um, I do recommend you don't use um, a baking um, sort of rolling pin because they get a little stickier. But so you want to roll out, and I'm doing this on a piece of parchment just so I don't mess up my table. There is some oil in the polymer clay. So it will leave a bit of a, should have taped it down. Well, this will be fine. So let's stretch it out just a little bit farther. Get it a little flatter. And you want to have it be about between a quarter inch and an eighth inch in thickness. And this won't change when you bake it. It will stay whatever thickness you um, make it. It doesn't shrink. It doesn't expand. They just stay exactly as they are. So let's just give it a little more. There we go. Flatten that out. Now we have that. So now I bring in my blade again. If you have just any kind of sharp knife at um, 
at your studio home, whatever. I started in a dining room when I first started mosaicing. So I appreciate any space that you take over to create uh, your creations. And so I'm just gonna give it a little trims. And then I like to organically, after I make the word, um, uh, finish my, edge, my edges here and just make them smooth. All right. So the first word we're going to do is brave. And so for brave, I have these um, letters that I love and they come from this um, company, which I believe is on Amazon. I've gone through a lot of different choices of my letters, but these to me um, really are the most um, fun and you, I like that they're not connected together. Sometimes you can get them connected together, but that just to me makes it look too rigid. So for me, I like to just be able to press in. I'm going to try and go tighter and see if you guys can see it a little better. Yeah, that's a little better. You can see it. Okay, so we have B and then R. And I like to also, you know, mix up my, um, mix up my uh, capitals and my what are we saying? Lowercase. <laughs> it's way too early this morning to start this thing, but we're good. Okay. So we have the word brave. So brave is a great um, mantra word. And um, there we go. I like to, um, I have this word hanging in front of my desk. So I see it every morning. I think it's really important to um, have mantras and affirmations kind of anywhere that you can look at every day. Believe it or not, your brain does not know the difference between um, imagination and reality. So whatever you tell your brain, that's what it will believe. And that's kind of what this whole hour with you guys is about, is that if you actually tell your brain, be brave, tell your brain positivity and creativity, it's going to believe that. He's also going to believe if you say, you know, the negativity things that uh, we all have a tendency to do from time to time. So let's just talk about the word brave. And I think it's a really important one. It's what I'm being right now. And I love to say that I'd rather be brave than perfect. So here we are together as human beings doing something fun and I'm being brave doing it. OK, so brave is made. And then the next word we're going to use is going to be peace. And um, I think I'm going to go with a red. And when you're making these, I prefer the um, the I prefer the darker um, the darker colors of polymer clay because you'll see in the end when we put the pastes and the powders on them, they um, the letters will show up better if these are darker. Let's mush this out a little bit and then we'll use the roller because it's definitely needs a little surface area. There we go. All right. So now, now I'm going to put in, take my cutter, my blade, so I can get somewhat of a sh Here we go. There we go. And it's always fun if you do get like a little bit of other colors in there. I did a mix and you can see in this one, gratitude, this is a bunch of different colors of clay that uh, make different colors show up. So if there's anything I can say about this course, which I will be repeating over and over, is you can't do it wrong. That's what is so beautiful about this course. You can't do it wrong. And there is some parts about mosaic art that you definitely need to follow some pretty, um, good guidelines. But um, in this course, no, that's basically why I designed this course too, is that um, I wanted it to be so that people could enjoy themselves, have gratification, and not have to worry about, um, we could get into a word called on demento, which I don't know how many of you on here are not mosaic artists, but that's how um, when we create mosaic art, the flow of something goes when we lay our tiles down. We want to have on demento, which gives the movement, gives the flow, the cohesiveness. This course does not have that. <laughs> so that's why I really love 
creating this. So it's just fun. It's gratifying. And we get our mantra words in, which are, you know, something really positive to see every day. Okay. So this word we're going to do now is peace, which again, I think is really important to see every day. We're all living, you know, I don't have to tell you, we're all living kind of stressful lives, whether we have this uh, pandemic happening or not. We're all, you know, kind of trying to not have the rat race, but it's just there. And we have to figure out ways to navigate around that. And how can we make the best lives for ourselves? Even if we have kids, if we have stress, if we have family, if we have health issues, you know, there's all kinds of things that are always going to make um, life a little more challenging. So how can we make choices that can make our life a little bit easier during those times? And I really feel like daily meditation and any kind of practice, people that are mosaic artists that go into their studio every day and get into that zone, that to me is a daily meditation. And it doesn't have to be sitting cross-legged with your you know, mantras all the time. It can also be wherever you go and you get into that zone, you go to that place that uh, it just doesn't matter, you know, what else is happening. You forget about time. You forget about um, eating, all of that. That is meditative. And what that does is it clears energy for you and can um, make you have more uh, positive and um, beautiful experiences in life. And I saw that start to show up in my life um, early on. I am a strong believer in Eastern philosophies and was introduced to them very early in my life and have followed them all along. So I always felt like, how did that just happen? I kind of asked for that. And when I started learning what manifesting was and how it was coming to me, I better understood how to practice so that I could create the things I wanted in my life. And one of the things I wanted was to be a full-time mosaic artist and to live as an entrepreneur. And that's what I have created. And I have created it also so that my husband could leave his job and work with me full time doing my passion. And if you can believe that, that's one of the most incredible things is he's a PhD in chemistry and now he works behind the scenes at Mosaic Arts Online. And that's just a beautiful thing that we have the freedom to do what we love. But I've worked really hard to do that with the work that it takes, plus really being clear about what I'm looking for in life and what I want. Okay, so we have our two letters now. And what we have here is rub and buff in gold and silver. And then we have these really fun mica powders that you open very slowly because they will go everywhere. I have green, I have pink. I, I think I also kind of, you know, obviously go by intuition what feels good. Green feels too Christmassy. Okay, so what we're gonna do as you see, I put on some gloves because this stuff gets super messy. And this is just a tiny dab I just put into the thing. And I'm just swiping. Just feathering and swiping. And let's see here. All right, so can you see that? See how Brave is starting to come out more? And what you want to make sure, the one part that makes these more fun and you know, successful is that if you do push too hard, sometimes you'll get the um, the stuff into the letter. So you see how I kind of lost the A and imagine. So I just wanted to show you that it can be a little less gratifying, but you can redo it. These things, even now I could take this brave since it's still soft and I could ball it back up and start all over again. I'd have a little mica powder in there, who cares? But I'm happy way so far Brave has come out because I can see the letters and I'm going to make even more so that you see the letters even more. So now I'm going to take a little bit of this paste and I mean a little. And once I take a little off, it is so important. Here's some tips and tricks that if you should own this course or choose to do this process, you must rub this and break it up a little bit because otherwise it'll become a big glove. Now this is where it is such a light feather. Like I'm just barely touching the polymer clay. It picks up so easily, but now you see Brave much easier. So there's a little gratification right there. And we've just barely gotten started and you have your first mantra word. And as you can see, I just rubbed it all over peace, which won't even matter in a minute. Okay, so Brave is done. Now let's take my orange mica powder. 
and I'm going to try and use a different finger. These things are so full. Okay, let's just gently left handed, not smart for me, but we're going to go for it. Yeah, this is going to turn out beautiful. So this got a little bit too much on the um, where my finger accidentally pushed with the silver. So you can take wipes. This is just a baby wipe and it'll just remove enough. I'm being got to be kind of gentle. You don't want to push the because the letters are in there. You don't want to push the piece too much. OK, so we're going to do one more. Gentle bit of this orange. OK, now cover that up get that out of the way all right so we see peace and now I'm going to try the gold and again it can go right over the silver that part's okay and then again rub your fingers really good together super light feather super light now do you see what it did is it brought up these little lines these are the impressions from the letter block and I don't like them so very gently with this finger I'm just going to rub them out. They come out very easily. I'm not a gentle person in life. I've kind of, you know, I don't know. I'm just not, I'm kind of a bull in a China shop. So I really have to be present, which is a big part of life. And think about Tammy, be super gentle. You don't need to press hard, be gentle. And now those numbers are gone and you can see peace. All right, so we've made two. I've given you a demonstration on that. Now, the next part of the process we are not gonna do because it requires going to get um, the oven, but I will tell you that you can either purchase a polymer clay oven if you're really gonna get into polymer clay, which a lot of people love to do, or go to a thrift shop and purchase like an old toaster oven, obviously an oven kind, not a toaster and use that do not this is a serious thing do not ever put polymer clay in any kind of oven that you're going to eat food in this is plastic it is toxic especially when it gets heated so please just be that conscientious about that and listen to me on that if anything else so here i see my brave has a little bit of that uh, those lines the impressions from the block so i'm just going to quickly remove that all right, so I'm going to put these two aside now, and they would go into the oven, and it would be, you heat, heat, I'll just tell you, you heat the oven for 20 minutes before preheat it, and then you can use something as simple as like this wooden block here. This is just quarter inch MDF board, a hot oven, and for a half an hour, they sit and uh, bake, and then when they come out, they are this mess out of here they are like this and so now they're rock hard and when i made these they were soft like that all the same exact process like i said with this one i just used um, a multiple of colors it's got purple red green and um, it was really fun and some of these do still have the impressions in them so obviously i was not paying as close attention but anyway so here we are this is just a six by six board because i'm doing a quick demonstration the one that i showed you earlier that is in the course is a 12 by 12. i'm also showing you how to do it because it can be more um, accessible is just on a piece of half inch mdf board that you can get at any hardware store and then i painted it black and i painted it black for a reason when we go to make this style of mosaic we don't want to use what we call grout. So if you're familiar with grouting, there is no grout in this mosaic. And what I've done is I actually used a different kind of adhesive than we're gonna to use today because it's called Thin Set and it is black tinted, which is a lot more involved than what I'm gonna show you today. So today with this demonstration, I basically wanna just talk about the different things that you would learn as far as art elements in creating this piece. So to start, when you do create a piece of art, you always wanna have a focal point. Well, you usually wanna have a focal point. And so for us, the focal point is gonna be the word joy because it's a little different. It's kind of where your eye goes to right away. And then everything else is gonna kind of happen around that focal point. So, <clears throat> What we're going to do is I like to kind of mess with the letters a little, see where they should go um, and the words. Um, 
And for now, I'm thinking you might want to put joy over there and then gratitude kind of here like that. So it's all intuition, what feels good. And what feels good to you, that's what matters. Don't think about anybody else or care what anyone else thinks. So now that I've sort of decided what the, the place will be for these, we need to bring in our adhesive. And the adhesives I like to use are either DAP Quick Seal, which is this one, which is very strong and very viscous and why I love it. And this is going to come out white, but it's going to dry clear. So it's really important that you use, um, that you find the clear drying one, even though it's going to be white when it comes out. If you have a PVA glue like Weld Bond, that works great. It's a little thinner. It moves around a little more. So if that's what you have at home, use it. So I'm going to use the DAP. So I just squeeze a little out. Like I said, it comes out white, but it dries clear. So what I'm going to do really quickly is I'm just going to start by putting my joy down and we'll clean up around my edges. But remember, again, it's going to dry white. I mean, dry clear, even though it looks white now. You do want to be careful. You try not to get anything on top of your tiles. That's always important. And right now I'm just working with some dirty old palette knife and a lid from last night's Thai food or whatever. So there we go. So to clean up a little bit, you can use a little wipe. You can also wipe this off, which is probably a little smarter, and then get your edges clean. And we're going to mosaic right up to these edges. But if you should walk away and you have a big chunk there and come back like a day later to keep working, you'll have a big rock hard piece of glue. So let's put these down. And then I'm going to open the camera up a little more. And I'm just going to start to mosaic and talk to you more about how mantras work and meditation, if you're interested, and how they have helped me. Okay, so we have breathe down, really important word. Gratitude, of course. Everyone needs to have every morning, I say my little gratitude prayer. Happy to be here, got my feet on the ground, doing what I love. Try and keep your fingers as clean as possible too. So that's kind of perfect. See, there's no glue coming out and see, I can like, I can move it, but I'm not as easy. <clears throat> it's gonna stay put. And uh, positivity is, very important and sometimes tough, but I get it. Okay, so positivity is down. And then we all need a little creativity in our life. And anybody can be creative. Anybody, anyone that even people that like make sourdough starters that have never made bread before can get creative. People that are making art, people that fix cars. My husband is the most creative when it comes to tech and thinking outside the box. So there is no limitation to what creativity is. Only you, you can limit yourself. And that is not ever a beneficial thing. Okay, so we are going to open the camera up a little bit. Hopefully we stay. There we go. Stay um, focused. And I'm going to move these out of the way. So when you're creating, now that we have our focal point down and we kind of have our other pieces in a composition of balance that I think makes me happy, it's time to add color, it's time to add shapes. And there might be a couple other things that I see in my piles here that I want to have be part of my mosaic. But in the most part, for the most part, it's just about not just throwing stuff down. So you want to work with intention and intention is important in anything we do. You really want to be present and think about where things are going and why you're putting them there and what is it going to serve. And you don't have to glue everything down piece by piece. I mean, once you're really good at it, maybe you do, but absolutely set a few pieces down and see what feels good. This is something called Mexican Smalty. It is a glass that comes from one family in Mexico that makes it um, for five generations. This is called Gold Smalty. This came from Italy. I brought it home from Italy. And the other thing I like to do is I don't like to have, let's see if I can show you, too many straight lines. I mean, I had to have a straight line here because of that, but then I kind of want to break it up a little bit. I want to have movement and things that make your eye kind of get excited to see. I also have over here, because we just don't have enough of our, um, enough of our words. So maybe you want to have something this, and I don't know if you can see it, but it says no matter where. 
So maybe you're into adventure and it just, no matter where you are, you can have love. So you can have happiness, you can have joy. So let's put a little bit of that on. So what I've done here just is another little tip and trick. This thing is so thin and I don't want it to get too buried amongst all the other tiles. So what I've done is I've kind of floated it a little bit and I'm just gonna drop it, but I'm not gonna, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not gonna press it down. I'm just gonna let it sit and it'll still dry with that glue, but it won't be too, um, it won't be too, uh, <clears throat> let's take a quick sip of water. It won't be too low. All right, so let's move on. Let's see here. So now this is when I let the materials kind of speak to me and tell me where do I wanna go? What do I wanna feel? And I don't think we'll finish this whole piece here, but I want to talk about a little bit about my <clears throat> meditation process and what I do. And then maybe it's something that speaks to you. But I do do a meditation process that is, um, like I said, with mantras. And um, what a mantra is, is it's a repetitive sound. And you are um, going to say, either two words, three words, but the best thing you can do with a mantra is do it with your breath. So if I wanna say, I am grateful, I have abundance, that would be maybe with your breath in, and then with your breath out, I am healthy, I, you know, I am calm. And whether you believe it or not, like I said earlier, that is what you want to share with the universe. And that is the, you know, that is what will come back to you as you continue to do this practice. What I also say about meditating is it's kind of like a, um, put this bead here. I think this is really cool and different. It's kind of like um, time release medicine. You're not going to meditate um, for 20 minutes on Monday and then you're gonna have like rock star day. You're gonna, it's a culmination. It's gonna happen later in the day. It's gonna happen when you kind of least expect it. Uh, you're just standing in line at the grocery store and someone you thought of hour ago, two hours ago calls you. And it's things like that that start to kind of open up in your world from the meditating, from the getting centered, from the breathing, from the quieting your mind. And what mantra means in Sanskrit is the M-A-N of mantra, it means mind, and the T-R-A means release. So it's a mind release. You are letting your mind have to focus, in a way, on those words. And so those words, like I said, if it's I am calm, I am grateful, I am positive, you're saying them in the breath in and the breath out. And you want to just sit quietly somewhere and release the the stresses that you might have just through breath and it really really works for me the most important part of my mantras is that it guides me um in my awareness to my intentions and i have some pretty um serious intentions of what i want to see my business do or how i want to travel and you know when it's safe and all of that and so I set those intentions and I also set them for, you know, staying healthy and um, being more present. So I think it's really important to, um, to uh, think about those things before you sit down to meditate. What are your intentions? What is the things that you want to create in your life? And anything is possible. And I have some pretty awesome um women that I follow in my life that um, have had incredible success with um, meditation and mantras. So, um, so I guess I just can't, um, I can't recommend it enough. Let's see, I think I like that there. Um, the other thing I wanted to share with you about the materials for this, if you are new to mosaic art and this is something you would like to get into, you can use anything you have. I mean, obviously I'm a mosaic artist, so I have a quite of an array of, uh, of materials, but like costume jewelry or <clears throat> even um, uh, jewelry that's heirlooms, things that are important to you. This is, there is no um, limit. You could do beach glass. You could do, you know, maybe some beautiful rocks you found on a walk. It doesn't have to be all this glass and um, stuff that I have. So please, again, outside of the box, just think about what would 
make um, you feel happy to look at it every day. And I have uh, many students that have already taken this course that have sent me emails telling me they're on their third and their fourth one, and that they've really changed it up. They've added family members' names and animals that have passed away. And it's just such a great way to use polymer clay. So I wanna show you one thing that if you are a mosaic artist or you wanna get into it more, there's only one tool that you can buy if you want to. Again, you haven't seen me use it yet and I could do it without this tool. But these are called mosaic wheeled nippers and this brand is called Lefinette. And what I'm gonna do here is this is just a piece of broken, I think a coffee mug or something, but I loved it because it had some really good color. So I'm just gonna put it in the wheels and you always wanna make sure the um, screw part of the wheels are facing out the same way kind of way your palm is facing. And you wanna hold the tool at the bottom of the handles and you're just gonna snap and I just hold, you wanna make sure it's straight and I just hold and it snaps. So this is a really soft, nice, um, ceramic but it's it just seems like something that could be fun to put into this piece so i'm going to add that here and um again there is no right or wrong so if you go to a thrift shop and you find a bunch of china that's how i started as a mosaic artist is just went to thrift shops and bought um broke plates i could break and uh stuff like that and was able to make, it was back in the shabby chic time. So I was making lamps and um, tables and things and had commissions left and right just from using um, broken china. Got to the point where I was commissioned to do um, a large uh, wall fountain here in Santa Barbara and they wanted all fiesta wear. So I actually had to go to the department store and buy perfect fiesta wear and break it. But you know, if that's what your client wants, that's what you do. So let's talk a little bit about color. And that's another important part of making this piece is you want to kind of have that balance. And if you know a little bit about color, you know, they're complementary colors, red, green, purple, yellow. And so maybe because I have this yellow up here, I probably want to repeat it a few times for balance. And then I want to have maybe it's complementary color somewhere nearby. This is kind of a little bit more blue than yellow than purple, but still right next to it, it makes the yellow pop that much more. So we can put that down and then I'm going to, before we go much farther, going to find where two more yellows could go. I'm an artist that always works in odds. So I'm sure you've heard that before, three, five, seven. So we have five words here and now I'm gonna put three yellows down. So I've got one, one, and now maybe two, maybe over here. And there's a little titch of yellow in that ceramic, but that's not enough to really. So those are sort of part of the intention that you can think about when you are creating, having just purpose. We just don't wanna throw stuff down. You do wanna have intention. And as you're creating, you just sort of think about, you know, what's important to me? Where, where do I see other, you know, things going? And maybe you put something aside, like if I wanted to put this hand in here, this little glass fused hand, it's a little bulky for me for this small piece, but you know, if something's important, you sort of figure out where it could go. I love all these little funky, um, I have these funky Buddha heads, Buddha heads that are fun. So I'm gonna pop one of those on, it's flat on the back. And again, that's why I really love this glue versus weld bond for this, because the viscosity kind of holds the pieces in place. When people work with stained glass mosaic, they may be able to use weld bond easier because everything's flat but this has so much texture, which is you know, another important art element. And so you need that kind of a um, little bit more viscous sort of adhesive to work with. So obviously because I'm talking so much, it's not as easy to work fast, but you're getting the idea hopefully. And we'll have a little questions and answers in a little bit. So if you guys do have any questions about what I'm doing here, we can um, talk about it more. And I'm never going to say that I am any kind of um, professional when it comes to meditating. I just feel so passionate about it that I love to share it. So I really feel like I'm just sharing my experience and what has helped me create um, a successful business, like I said, has truly been because of um, the meditating and the hard work. Don't think that I sit on a, a rock all day 
in a cross-legged position. I do it every day for anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes, not long. And a lot of people tell me they can't meditate because they can't quiet their mind. That's a lie, just so you know. Anybody can do it. And you can literally start with a minute a day. And if you start with a minute a day and you do make it as important as drinking water and all those other things we have to do, then all of a sudden you'll find yourself doing it for 30 and 40 minutes a day and you'll see a life changing. It also has many, you know, health benefits. And um, my husband's a scientist and he doesn't believe many of my Eastern philosophies, but meditation, he's really, really um, supportive of and believes very strongly because of the science that is behind it. And um, it can, you know, relieve stress, obviously, anxiety, people go off of medicine because they start doing this. I don't suggest it. I am just uh, reporting some of the things I've read and people I've talked to. I've studied with some um, meditation specialists in certain workshops and different things like that. But um, mostly it is just something that I do every day. I actually put it on my to-do list every day because I just love seeing it there that I know it's the way I'm going to start my day. And you can do it any time of any day. If it's better for you uh, at your lunchtime, if it's better for you when uh, before you go to bed so you can sleep better, by all means. The other wonderful thing about this piece, if you can see, is it's got so much texture, right? It just comes up off the board in so many ways. So I'm thinking about this red piece that, you know, in normal mosaic world, this would be like, oh, what do I do with that? But to me, I'm like, <clears throat> to me, sorry, it's a little dry here in California right now. Um, <clears throat> to me, I can use it in, I don't know, like right there on the edge. Like it just looks like, wow, it just kind of sticks up and is so much fun. All right. So, so one of the things I think is really um, that I've read a lot about that I think is really important about when I meditate and just in life in general is having a lot of gratitude, not having a lot, having gratitude. And gratitude is one of those things that can really, um, if you really feel it and you're really in that space and you are grateful for what you have and not, uh, you know, any negativity coming through that. It, it can really, believe it or not, change the vibration and um, change the way that your body reacts to things in life. And um, it's just, it, to me, the two things that I find the most important is gratitude and positivity. And I really feel like if you feel those things, they are, you know, the truth in um, who you are and it will really um, come through. So the other part of why I love this workshop is how freeing it is. Like I said before, you know, a lot of mosaic artists are constantly, you know, trying to learn new rules and learn new techniques and create new ways, which is really, you know, awesome. Cause I think mosaic art has changed so much in the contemporary world of what people are using for materials and what they're creating with. And if you are not familiar with mosaic arts online, we do have, over 80 courses from 25 different instructors that are the expert in what they do and what they're in their studio creating and they want to teach. They come to our studio and we um, we film their courses. So I've kind of gone from this passionate mosaic artist, which I'll always be, to a bit of a um, producer for online courses. So, and here's like a little, this is kind of a cool story. And I'll just tell you this as part of like, the manifesting or what you never know, you know, what the universe is going to present to you sort of world. And hopefully this doesn't all sound too woo woo to all of you. But when I was 24 years old, I was working on a TV show named Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman. And I was a costumer and I really enjoyed it. And I, it was a big deal to get into, um, onto a show. I had worked as a apprentice in a warehouse renting costumes and I made it big, big deal. And I'm on the show like maybe a year and I said to the executive producer, I said, could I meet with you one day? I would like to see what it's like to be a producer. And she said, sure. So she took me into her office and sat me down and said, well, what do you want to do? And I said, well, maybe I want to be a producer. I kind of like what you're doing and this is cool and it's creative and I'm creative. And she said, well, you'll have to go back, start from the beginning. You'll become, you know, basically a grunt and have to do things that, you know, you've really accomplished a lot so far. Do you want to go that much backwards? 
And I said, nope, I'm good. So, so that was it. That was, you know, the end of that conversation and the end of that sort of um, looking into that more. And so fast forward to now, I am a producer. I'm a different kind of producer. I produce online courses, but I have relationships with people. I have to be creative. I'm um, constantly, you know, working to make sure our business stays afloat. And the full circle of that story is that um, she contacted me recently because she isn't producing as much as she used to. And she makes jewelry and she wanted to know if we could talk about maybe her teaching her jewelry on one of our courses. And it's like just one of those stories where you're like, you know, just comes full circle of the people in your life and the energy that you put out there. So you just never know what you stay open to, what can happen. So I'm just going to keep creating and keep talking because that's what I do. And we are probably getting close to question time, Aaron. Is that true? Aaron? I'm here. Uh, we I wanted to give you time to keep going with this. This is <laughs> for me. I'll keep, <laughs> I'll keep talking. I'll keep, you know, making. I don't know if um, it's, what it's your that, normal like questions is, or you can interrupt and, me. Absolutely, and we already have a bunch of questions here. I oh, think, you do. Yeah. So th before we hop into the questions, you know, this has been so. I mean, I'm obviously listening along, so it's I'm thinking in my own head the different pieces of meditation. It's just been very enjoyable. Um, oh, good. But before we hop into the full questions, you know, why don't we let folks put a few more questions in that way I could kind of bring them all up in one shot. And why don't you talk a little bit about the Mantra Mosaics course, right? Because I know you are offering a little bit of uh, at least some level of a discount while it's on Discover. I think it'd be worth mentioning that. And then we can leave the rest of the time as long as you're with us for all the different questions that came up today. Sweet. Yeah. So, yes. So because I was... Um, approached by Teachable to do something. And I felt this was the best way to share with a wider audience that maybe is not um, familiar with mosaic art and not to intimidate people. Because I think mosaic art can be very mysterious to people that don't know where or how to dive in. I felt this was a great gateway course. Plus, again, like I said, I can talk about meditation and mantras all day long and affirmations. But yes, because um, I'm here doing this, we are offering $20 off the course, which is normally $97. So you would get it for $77 for a week. And um, that's a great, you know, a great savings on that course. So it's, uh, I believe, about 20 sections. And it's me going through the whole process. Again, you'll see a lot more. You'll see how to bake them. It's just way more in depth than kind of this demo of um, the course. And, you know, Mosaic Arts Online, like I said, has a lot of courses. So if it's something that you are interested in and then want to even dive in further, like I said, we have a huge library of courses um, to choose from. But this one to me, for a wider audience of people that maybe are not aware of what mosaic art can be and is, I think this is a great way to um, introduce people to it and give them something a little bit more as far as feeling good and positivity. Incredible. And I think that's a really natural lead into some of the questions. So Tammy, if you're ready, um, yeah, I'll, I could start bringing some of these questions on screen. And I think, uh, uh, are you ready for some questions? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to move the camera. So again, just give me a minute so I can actually see you. And then um, we'll, um, okay. so we're just going to go. The great switcheroo. The great switcheroo. Cool. Here we are. Yay. Perfect. Well, so we have a bunch of different questions that uh, have kind of came through, but what I kind of wanted to start with, because I've seen it asked a few different times is I'm just going to grab it. And I apologize. I'm grabbing questions out of order, folks. But uh, is regarding the course itself and even the, the workshop today, you know, is there a materials list? I think a lot of folks wanted to know what you use and kind of what you had used throughout this workshop. Is that something that's part of the course? Is that something you might share even for today's workshop? Yeah, it is part of the course. All of our courses come with a very, very detailed um, downloadable uh, PDF that gives you not just the materials, but where to get them. So we call them the tools, materials, and resource lists. And so it does come with the course. It's a little too, I think, involved to start trying to name vendors and different uh, materials 
now, but um, each one of our courses, once purchased, it gives you the full list of what you can do. And that's the other thing I wanted to say. I don't want people to feel intimidated that they have to make a huge investment in this course because go to the thrift shops, you know, find your jewelry, find the things, the beach glass, the rocks, the, the things that matter to you. And it makes it more sentimental. And then if your biggest investment is the polymer clay and the letters, um, I could put that, I could send that to you, Aaron, or we could figure that out, how yeah. to get that to you. Cause that part is pretty, mostly on Amazon too. Just, you know, search Amazon for polymer clay Sculpey. Um, You want the letters um, and um, just like the rub and buff and the mica powders. Very cool. And yeah, even if it's, uh, you give us a few of those names, we could just put them in the email we send out to anyone who registered. Oh, that'd we'll, be great. Yeah, yeah we'll we, don't, we don't mind sharing those links. Um, Super. What, two quick things before we get to the next question, because I've seen some folks ask about this. Uh, the course is forever. So the, yeah, the discounts yes. only for this week. Mm -hmm. don't, don't feel like you need to, to take all of the course in a week. That is not what we're saying. Um, very important because even me, I buy courses and I might take them in six months, but uh -huh. no problem. All, all courses at Mosaic Arts Online never expire. Yes, exactly. Um, and in regard to the discount, I've saw some questions just around, uh, is there a special coupon code? Actually, if you click the link that's in the YouTube description or that I put in the chat, it'll automatically apply that for you. So don't, you don't have to go hunt for a, a coupon code. Yeah. Um, getting more into the tactical questions. Cause so I saw so many of those come through. Oh dear. <laughs> um, yeah. The specifically around the oven, right. I'm going to try to go in some chronological mm -hmm. order. Um, yep. Sharon asked, you know, anything beyond or anything else besides a toaster oven to use? Can you talk? Well, about there, there really isn't. I mean, you don't want to use your own personal baking oven for these things. Cause like I said, they're toxic, but we literally, I was going to put it on camera today. I mean, it's huge. If Jerry wants to get it out. Um, we have, I literally went to a thrift shop and bought a $12 massive toaster oven because I was going to show that on here, but it's just so cumbersome and huge. It's under the table. And, um, but that is what you need. You do need some kind of oven and you can buy a proper polymer clay oven. If you're into making more and more, um, uh, polymer clay products, but literally this is what we bought at the, you know, at the thrift shop for 12 bucks. And so that's, that's all you need is something like that, that you can use. But I just recommend you don't ever put food in it. And I'm just being hyper, hyper. There might be people out there like I do it all the time, but coming from me, that's how I feel. That seems very fair. And a $12 investment to not poison myself. I'm sold. <laughs> um, gra grabbing another question here. Uh, you covered this kind of earlier in this, but, uh, from That's a really good question, and I've never done it. I've never used epoxy sculpt in this thing, but please go try. Um, yes, we do have other artists here at Mosaic Arts Online that are using epoxy sculpt as design elements, and they're creating other stuff. But I've never seen if the rub and buff and the mica powders could stay attached to epoxy sculpt. But again, in the art world. Let me tell you, the most important thing you can ever do as an artist that you did when you were four years old is experiment, is just try, is just see if it works. So if you own epoxy sculpt and you have some letters and you want to try it, please do. And let me know how it worked. Let us all know. Okay? I mean, yeah, exactly. I want to know as well now. Uh, going back to the toaster oven, you did mention a temperature and time. I forget it as well. Can you just kind of repeat that? Yeah, it's somewhere between about 250, 300, and it's 30 minutes. And you do want to um, preheat the oven for 20 minutes. So I always turn the oven on, usually as I'm kind of making the words. And then by the time I've finished, you know, five or six words, I can go pop them in the oven for 30 minutes. And a little tip to tell you is that when they first come out of the oven, they're still going to be actually mushy a little bit. And you're going to be like, oh, no, they're not done. They're done. They just need to sit out in a cooler temperature and kind of cure and harden, and then they're fine. So I think a lot of people get confused and say, oh, it's still not hard enough. No, take it out and let it cool. And all of a sudden, they'll be like uh, little plastic rocks kind of thing. Thank you for the question, Kathy. And again, going back to some of the materials questions is just, yeah, around some of the glues. Any words of guidance here? I hate that glue. 
I don't like that <laughs> blue. It's toxic. It smells. There are so many other choices out there. That is probably why DAP um, Quick Seal is so great is it doesn't smell. It doesn't stick to your fingers forever. And it's what people, construction people use as their kitchen and bathroom caulking. So it's meant for, um, it's meant for, uh, what am I trying to say? Water. So it will, you know, it, it can, that's the other thing about weld bond is that if it gets moist, it can return back to its original consistency. So I don't trust it, especially in a non-grouted piece, as much as I trust my DAP quick seal. I teach a retreat in Mexico and it's the only adhesive we use if we're not using thin set is our DAP quick seal. And people are not aware of it. And when they learn it about it, it's a game changer for them. And you can get it at the hardware store for five bucks a tube. Thank you for that question, Sharon. And again, following up on kind of the materials regarding the MDF board. What is MDF board? It's medium density fiber board. It's wood. It's just a composite wood. And again, less expensive. It is not the same as Weddy board. Weddy board is in a uh, waterproof um, uh, extruded foam board that comes in many thicknesses. And the piece that you saw, the original that I made, the substrate I use that's in the original, this one, See how thick it is? This is actually made from another course that we teach called substrates, but it's made from roofing insulation that's then been wrapped in <clears throat> used tinted thin set to, um, to cover it. So that's kind of, that's why I didn't want to go that deep because I wasn't sure, you know, kind of who's here that we, we confuse people more than just kind of guide them. Very fair. Thank you for asking that, Ellen. Uh, rapid fire, another tool related question. The name of the long blade. Just, just go on to Amazon and um, put in polymer clay tools or blade and it'll come up. And I got a kit that is the roller, the blade, and a, like a thing you can actually put your um, polymer clay on, little plastic trays, all of it maybe 12 bucks. So um, I, I hate to say it, but Amazon is your friend. And, and if you can support um, an art supply store in your area, they will most likely have a lot of these tools too. So I do go there as well. We have a local art supply store. I love to, to support. Thank you so much, Tammy. Uh, and I, I remember you mentioning this earlier, uh, when you, especially when you put the gloves <clears throat> on and you busted out the mica powder. Uh, yes. What brand of mica powder today? The brand of the paste. Oh, here they are. Here they are. I have them right here. The paste is um, Rub and Buff is the brand, and it's a silver silver leaf is this one. You can see that. You can screenshot it or whatever works. And then this mica powder is called Rolio, and I'm not as um, proficient in my um, mica powders as some of the polymer clay artists out there and other artists that love to use mica powders for a whole list of things. But the Rolio is really fun, and I got 24 of them. Um, and maybe that was 23 bucks again. Thank you for that. And then this, if they want to see it, this is the DAP quick seal, just so you can see it up close. And this is the more, you don't need, you don't need the micro mold guard part, but the store didn't have any of the other brand, other one in clear. What are you going to do? Uh, next question, you know, Obviously, I imagine some of this is preference, but do you fill in spaces? Well, you know, so like in this piece, obviously the spaces are pretty tight and you don't see a whole lot of space. And that was intentional. And if, you know, in the course, I filled this whole thing in. So you would see more of that where this was just a demonstration to kind of get everybody started and get them interested if it's something they'd like to do. So do not fill in the spaces with grout if that is what you're asking. No, in this course, there is no grout. It's black thin set on a black substrate. And um, you could do this course with the DAP Quick Seal. This could have been DAP Quick Seal. And that's why I paint the MDF boards black so that that's what comes through. Well, related to that is how do you tint the thin set? That that's a lot tougher question to try and answer here, but we do have a free um, course at Mosaic Arts Online how to tint black mortar or thin set. So you can figure that out there. Got it. And then you know, follow yes. up to that exactly. 
Yes, any kind of tiles, any tiles you want, anything, vitreous glass tiles, um, ceramic tiles. I mean, I could have pulled out so many more materials, but again, did not want to intimidate or confuse people. So yes, please experiment, try whatever you like. Um, this one that I just started working on today is would be considered an interior piece. Like I wouldn't put this one outside because of the wood. Wood will expand and contract outdoors and your pieces will eventually fall off. This piece could live outside because it's an exterior grade substrate and I used an exterior grade thin set. And all the pieces on here are glass or they're very um, high quality plastic, should we say. I wouldn't use anything that's too cheap or you know could fall apart, but you gotta use your own judgment too. Well, Tammy, we are at time. Before we leave, I just wanted wow, to say, fun. yeah, it flew right by. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for being here. Uh, you know, that was a just in a very enjoyable, therapeutic and meditative workshop, not just for me as the host, but I know for audience as well. But, you know, before we sign off, everyone who attended today, can we let Tammy know in the comments that we appreciated her doing this? You know, the, the reason we have these workshops is to facilitate this connection. Can we get a thank you in the chat? It would be, it would, you know, it would mean a lot for me. It would mean a lot for Tammy. And, you know, with 30 seconds left, any parting last words of wisdom, anything else you wanted to share, Tammy, to this group today? Oh, I think I talked it all out, but I just want to say that, you know, be present as much as you can. And, you know, if you can meditate, meditate, but find the mantras that work for you and just see them every day because your brain doesn't know the difference between reality and imagination. So imagine your life amazing. Tammy, that, that is Terrific. Thank you so much for that. Uh, thank you for everyone who joined us today. Uh, if you're you. watching this, you know, after the fact, as we mentioned, the link to Tammy's course is in the YouTube description. We're also going to send it out after if you're not watching this on YouTube today. So thank you, everyone. We're hopping off just a second. We appreciate you joining us today. Bye-bye.